Hey dolls, welcome back, and if you're new, hello, my name is Jessie, and today we're going to react to Season 2, Episode 5 of Chucky, Doll on Doll. I look a little different than I do usually in my Chucky videos. Hurt my hand today. I cut it pretty deep in the crevice of between my pointer finger and my thumb, so I took the time that I would have taken to prepare for looking like Tiffany uh, to cuddle with Dobby. I do, however, have my my gold Tiff necklace on to, uh, you know, manifest the positivity, if you will, if any comes out of Tiffany. And I do have my final girl sweatshirt on, so I'm in theme. I'm excited for this episode. Let's just jump in and see what happens. But before we do, don't forget to throw a like or dislike if you do or do not like what you see. But comment down below that I subscribe if you have not yet. We do fun things here. Ring on to be notified when I upload videos and don't forget to check the link down in the description for my patreon it is five dollars a month it's only a dollar 25 a week it is all of my unedited reactions of everything that I do on YouTube in addition to more don't forget to follow us on all social media at star underscore chef underscore productions or at Jesse Dobby for Twitter I was laughing because I, I can't do a very good thumb with this thumb but without further ado this is season two episode five of Chucky doll on doll yeah, yeah Nika! This one is for Lexi. <gasps> Just picture it. Lexi is my friend. Oh, they're all my friends. Oh my God. There's another one. This one here is for Devin. Yeah, and he's this buff as shit. Jagged blade. <laughs> <gasps> oh! <gasps> oh my God, are we having a Chucky on Chucky fight? What the? It's amazing! Oh, better than killing. Don't tell me. You found it in there. Chucky. Fighting stance, let's go. Keep him up. I am good Chucky. I am. Devin's like, let's not get too happy. Oh. You're the Chucky no one will remember. Chucky, Chucky found Jesus. <gasps> I'm the Chucky I choose to be. So he's still got the killer instinct in there. Although you could argue that was self-defense. Definitely self-defense. Oh my god. How did I do, coach? You did great, good Chucky. Stuffies! I got a lot of stuffies. I got this one right here. It's a baby squishmallow. It's like I don't even know you. What are you talking about? Stop it. Jake. Different Chucky who killed Gary. Yeah, but Devin Martha. brings up a good point. How long is Gary it gonna last? Jake should be more concerned about how permanent it's gonna be. Oh my gosh. Damn it. Oh, Jesus. God damn it. I love Devin and I hate that he's having such a horrible season. You don't look so good. I'm worried about you. The killer doll on the loose. I'm worried about me. Talk to me, Dean. Vivian's like, um, y'all dragged me into this, now there's a dead guy in my closet. Can we do something about this? If you don't quit while you're ahead, you're going to die. I had five gerbils. Mom would tell me that they ran away. I couldn't figure it out. Fourth grade, mom had left the cage open. She was passed out, and she wouldn't wake up that time. I don't think she ever wanted me to have any of them at all. They do their best to make you happy, right? Oh, I love it. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You know what? You're trying to kill me? I'm not, but uh, of course I believe in you, Lexi. Mr. Pasta would have a lot to say. What would he say? Don't be silly, Lexi. Cats can't talk. <laughs> Again? If I get so custody of the kids, that's enough. Have a little compassion. I can't <laughs> help it. I just like to murder people. Is that so bad? I don't. If you must know, Nika's my girlfriend. She truly believes that she's not hurting Nika. She thinks she's coping. Maybe it's a miracle? I'd say it is. So what's insane is that Tiffany truly believes that Nika is her girlfriend. We saw at the end of the last, or middle towards the end of last season, she kept trying to convince Nika of this, and Nika's like, no, I'm not. And she really believes that what she is doing 
is helping everyone's situation. So like Nika, you're taken care of. I take care of you. We get to be together. Sometimes Nika is Chucky, so I get to see Chucky. Hello, Jay. Watch him on Viewmaster's reactions. And it's insane because it's like it's so upsetting for poor Glenn because it's like what's true and what's not. Like, stop lying to me. Stop lying. Half of that wasn't a lie. But it's so insane. It's like, how could it possibly be true? But this is what Glenn and Glenda are starting to figure out is that Tiffany, well, Jennifer Tilly, who they don't know is Tiffany, is absolutely insane. So I am very curious to see how they go about this because I really don't think that Glenda's going to be able to say or do anything to get more information out of her. I feel bad for Glenn. I know that Glenn has a soft spot. Obviously, it's their mom, but probably got to get the hell out of there. He's a good girl. Yeah. You're basically my hero. Oh my gosh. When he killed him. Like I finally knew what I was for. Oh. Um. It's like that murderous rage is always going to be in him, but now he's like the Dexter of Chucky's. The Joker got me good. And the citizens of Gotham. It's so creepy how little bits of every situation are still Mr. present. Me, me, man isn't ever going to hurt you ever again. You love each other. Will you please stop fighting that? Yeah. Why do I feel like Jake or is not into enemy. this anymore? Open Leviticus and read it. Just couldn't wait. Sin never never wait. back. Does it then never wait. Then I... I like her. Where have you been during the reign of terror throughout these hallways and done what you were too weak to do? Maybe these kids need someone to talk to. I mean, are you punishing him for blasphemy or for creative prowess? Why not both? I agree with Father Bryce. This is a display of violence. If you're feeling a lack of control of the student body, maybe it's because you're lacking it, Father. Devin Ooh. is a traumatized kid. This is evil. Evil. Sister Ruth, please. Yeah, you were just a crazy a pants. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Maybe they can straighten them out in a youth facility. I disagree oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, he's coming back. We know what it takes to destroy a Chucky. Oh, no. Notice how they're always yes. eating the Swedish meatballs, Where too. did that sibling get off to? What were their names? Um, uh, 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 Chandler and... Uh, She's well? testing her. Uh, get, I'll be right back. At least Glenn and Glenda have a good relationship with Aunt Meg. More bills. Do you have a check for me? Oh, my God. You promised me chocolate. Chocolate. Oh. I love that portrait of me. Years I've made you money playing online poker. Oh my and god. Family guy. Of all episodes for me to Hello. not do the Tiffany Please. costume. Meg is here now. Tell me about those Dean brothers. I cannot believe this. So she has Jennifer Tilly in a freaking birdcage locked away in another room. This is like the cabinet of curiosities in the freaking Tiffany world. Oh my god. I was actually, you know what's funny? The fact that that question never occurred to me is kind of disappointing. I feel very disappointed in myself. I feel like I definitely should have thought, I just assumed that she killed her. But now that we have this whole entire saga of freaking trying to get Nika a captive and cutting off the limbs and keeping her prisoner, and obviously she's not going to kill Jennifer Tilly. She's going to keep her. Oh my God, I can't believe this. I cannot believe freaking believe this so this is my theory i am assuming that tiffany is going to or jennifer tilly is going to feed her the wrong information and then meg will know obviously that's not the right stuff and know something's up she's been in there for fucking years she has been her secretary for years. This is so awesome. This is what I mean about how much I love this show. Like the layers that they have to each and every episode and every story arc that they take. Jennifer Tilly is back. I'm really afraid for Devin because I feel like him ripping out the pages of the Bible is obviously not going to fly over with the father too well. So I really don't want Devin to get removed. 
he literally just said to the nuns, maybe he would do better in a correctional facility and it's in a teenage correctional or juvenile correctional facility. And the therapist is actually the one that said, no, I think I could still help him. I still think that there's something up with her. Where the hell did Trevor go? And who the hell took Trevor? Either he crossed over into Narnia or someone took him. Fingers crossed for Narnia. Maybe someone was cleaning up for the other Chucky. Good Chucky was huh. texting somebody named the Colonel. I will die if Nadine's the Colonel. Who would do something like that? Are you fucking kidding me? I don't like how Jake's being so defensive of Chucky and not consoling Devin more. I shouldn't be around anyone. No, no, I, I want you here. We're gonna need some help. Jake just wants this to be a thing so freaking bad. He's willing to ruin his own relationship. I just feel like he doesn't hear me sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. Or he won't. Mm-hmm. Maybe Chucky's not the only problem. I mean, I wanted to talk to you guys. I'm just like looking through my mom's Instagram. Wait, wait, go back. What? He's leaving a trail for himself to find his way back home. Hmm. Guide the baby through the Chucky during its life. You. Oh my gosh, this is so insane. A sparkly pink tumbler, it's the queerest baptism ever. I love it. No more evil. Wow, what a feeling. And it was so easy. Thank you, Jake, thank you, Jake, thank you, thank you, Jake. Jake just wants this to be a thing so bad. He just wants to make this a, a good Chucky a reality. It is confirmed. I don't care about the possibilities of it might turning back. I don't think that's a, a chance. There's a chance of that. He's just too good. He's too good. Because if this is real, if this is true, if he is good and he stays good, he can make peace with that Chucky and finally try and find some peace within himself. That's why he keeps doing what he's doing. But what's terrible is that he is pushing away the two people that mean the most to him. He is pushing away Lexi and he is pushing away Devin, majorly pushing away Devin. He's losing himself. He's losing himself and who he is and hurting the people he loves. I mean, it would be different again if he was like, there, this is a good Chucky in front of me. I see that. But yes, I also acknowledge that there is a possibility it might not stick or he might be faking or it might not might not sick and he's not saying that side of it so he's completely dismissing the feelings of Devin and Lexi for his own needs and I hate that because it's really selfish and it's annoying and it's frustrating and again I really don't like these he's just brushing off the fact that there's problems between him and Devin. Devin keeps constantly bringing it up. Like the, in the first episode when he shows up in the window and Devin jumps on him and kisses him and he's like, oh yeah, like we got to get going. You haven't seen your boyfriend in how long? And he's kissing you and like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. And you're like, yeah, we have shit to do. It's just, it's so frustrating and I hate it because I love Devin. I love Devin so much. Devin's my favorite out of all of them. I love him. And it's just freaking frustrating that this is happening. But at least Lexi and Devin are on the same page. It's interesting how it's split now. Literally just popped up in my head this episode. What if Nadine is the colonel? Why is Nadine so okay with a talking doll? Why is Nadine so okay with a dead kid in her closet? Why is Nadine... <laughs> so okay with baptizing Chucky and doing all of these things that are so absolutely insane. Is it the fact that she's just interesting and quirky and goes along with it and it's cool? Or is it something else? I, I get very uncomfortable in horror and thriller-esque themed situations like shows and movies when they make me feel too comfortable with someone, especially when they're new. I feel very comfy and cozy with Nadine. I love Nadine. She's being there for Lexi. She's a great addition. She's fun. She's funny. She's interesting to watch. But I'm telling you there's something up with her. And the fact that we are now so comfortable and okay with her being there is starting to actually make me a little nervous. But I hope I'm wrong because I really do like Nadine. She going to be like, oh my god. It's Christ coming through in the Chucky doll. Risen. Oh my God, she is. You. How can I serve thee, Lord? Oh, good Lord. Look how hot she looks. She's such a badass, man. You it's know, gonna be the wrong information. When you were 
were talking about the Dean brothers. The yeah, Thomas drink it up. Bar, and then they got thrown in jail. That is the plot of the Blues Brothers. Oh, gosh. Bitch. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, excuse me? Follow her. Don't leave Jennifer. her alone. Follow her. Jen yes. There you go, Glenn. Meg, it's me, Jennifer. In here. I'm in here. Make I'm sure you proud. watch her. She could have knives around. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no! No, Aunt Meg! My name is Tiffany Valentine, and I'm your goddamn mother! Oh, my God! No! I liked Aunt Meg! I really, really liked Aunt Meg, and I was just going on about how it's so awesome that she has this relationship with the twins, and everybody trusts each other, and they can confide in each other, and so it's so wonderful. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my gosh. She just didn't, she didn't just kill Aunt Meg. She brutally slaughtered Aunt Meg. I loved that shot, though. These scenes are so beautifully done. We get the crossover between the shadow on the wall and the blood splattering and then back to the arms. And, oh my god, that was gorgeous. From a horror movie standpoint. But oh my god, Aunt Meg, right in front of Jennifer Tilly. That's so sad. But I love that line delivery. Who are you? I'm Tiffany Valentine. What Glenn needs to do is grab the doll and fucking book it. All right, are we going to get any information about the colonel? We got six minutes. I know how this all must sound. And look. Take your time, yeah. sweet face. No more chocolate. Was she even getting chocolate? I'd be like, Mom, why don't you go clean up you and then freaking grab her us. and run? Our whole lives. See, they loved Aunt her. Meg. They are not going to be happy. She's a beautiful, beautiful movie star. Poor Glenn. Oh my God. This is so much. Oh my God. It's going to be the freaking doll. It's me. What about Glenda? It's for them, too. Let's go get them. No, 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 no. No, you go by yourself. Go by yourself. Did she grab the Jennifer Tilly doll? All right. I can't believe that Glenn is actually bringing her there. Ugh. It's a okay, severed head here. Chucky graveyard. <gasps> oh my God, is this where Andy is? Tell me this is where Andy is. Tell me this is where Andy is. Andy. <gasps> oh my god, he's alive. Fuck Try. you. Knew she was involved somehow. That's Colonel to you. Andy, oh. babe. <laughs> no! The entire school down. <laughs> Alright, so there you have it, episode 5, Doll on Doll, and oh my god, Auntie, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god! So we freaking get to see Andy, but not in the circumstances that I would like to see him in. Holy shit. We have the freaking therapist. I fucking knew it. I knew that freaking therapist bitch was in on it somehow. I honestly thought, though, that maybe it was going to be for a good reason to help them. Clearly, that is not the case. So they are collecting all of the dead bodies, bringing them to this cabin that is covered in severed Chucky parts. We meet the colonel, who is completely bald, skinning in Andy's fucking leg. Skinning Andy. I don't know why, probably just to torture him. Oh my god! Andy's got long hair and a beard, and he's all gross, and oh my Andy, my poor Andy. So the good news is that Andy's alive. The bad news is that that's where he is. The other good news is that Devin and Lexi know. So holy crap, I hope that they can help him. Why don't they get rid of the bodies? Maybe they just haven't gotten to that part yet? Oh my gosh. That just mind fucked me. That just completely and utterly mind fucked me. I cannot believe this. We also have at the very, very end, Jennifer Tilly watching Aunt Meg, her sister Meg, be brutally murdered. We have... 
Tiffany giving Glenn their doll, seeing it for the first time. I thought like all these flooded emotions and thoughts were going to come back, but not yet, at least. I am just so confused. So Glenn says, I have to show this to Glenda. And Tiffany says, let's go find them. And they do. Now, see, this is this is what's hard. Like, I'm sitting here thinking, Glenn, no, what the hell? You literally just got asked that before. And you're like, no, 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 I can't take you there because that's where Nika is. And that's where Kyle is. And, you know, there's a whole argument about it. I was like, good, good, good decision, good decision. I don't know if Glenn just feels so helpless. Like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Uh, what, what am I supposed to do? I just found out that I've been lied to my entire life, that my mother is not who she says she was, that there's this doll that looks like me, and now there's a doll of Jennifer Tilly talking just like the Chucky one, and uh, like it's just like, I think that they feel lost and confused and scared and obviously fucking traumatized by everything. That Glenn's just thinking, I I guess let's go. It's like I can't I can't even think right now. I can't even think or feel. I am so messed up by all of this. All right, let's just go. Because otherwise, why would you reveal the place where they were? That's so dangerous. I would go by myself, or I would have called Glenda and been like, dude, what the fuck do we do? But now Tiffany's whole fucking mansion gets burned to the ground with Meg in it and they flee in the car and Jennifer Tilly or Tiffany Valentine looks completely content with this whole scenario. Holy shit. We also have Jake at the end there saying, I have an idea to the good Chucky. Say, so the good Chucky is saying, I shouldn't be around you. I could possibly hurt you. This isn't a good idea. I could hurt someone. And Jake says, I have an idea. But I, th and I think he says, but we're going to need help. So what the heck is that all about? Where are they going to go? Who could Jake possibly be going to for help that isn't Lexi or Devin? I would lose my shit. If he brings him to the father, if he brings him to Devin Sawa and he's like, listen, I got to show you something. I trust you because you trusted me. I'm on the right path. Like you say, I should be on this Chucky is born again Christian. Meet him. Say hi. It's OK that he talks and he waves. It's all good. And last but not least. For the fucking finale of fuckery chaos in this episode, we have the crazy bitch nun bowing down to steroid Chucky. They they alluded to this in the other episodes too, where the the older nun was laughing at her and being like, "At lunch, didn't you see? I forget what it was. Didn't you see Jesus or God in like your yogurt or something like that? I can't remember what it was." And because they, they she thought that she saw him in the face of the Chucky or whatever, and uh, so they've been alluding the whole season that she's looking for signs, like she's going out of her way to look for signs. Now she sees a freaking walking, talking doll that says, I have risen. Literally the first thing he says is, I have risen. It didn't take me three days. And she bows down and says, what can I do to serve you? Holy shit. That episode was so freaking good. I love this show. Hands down, I know I always say it, one of my favorite shows of all time. And I know we're only in the middle of the second season, but it is just so skillfully done, beautifully done. I love it. The last episode was by far one of my favorites of the season, but this one was so good. This one was really, really good. The whole Chucky scene in the, in the beginning, the fight with the two Chuckies. Oh my God, that was genius. I, this, this might be tied for the last one, but the last one was just really fun with the dinner party. Holy crap. I cannot wait to see what happens in the next episode. As always, they didn't really give us much to be honest with you. I feel like I need to watch it again because it was so quick and I was so just like mentally not there. But oh my God, amazing episode. I fucking love this show.
I can't believe out of all the episodes for me to not do the Tiffany costume. It's like literally Tiffany. I promise I will be in it next week. Hopefully my hand isn't like this. But Everyone throw a like, a bird, dislike if you do or do not like what you see. But comment down below, let me know why, subscribe if you have not yet. We do fun things here. Ring the link that to be notified when I upload new videos. Don't forget to check the link down in the description for my Patreon. Follow us on all social media. But that is it. So long, everyone. Try and make someone smile today. You never know when you might need it next. Bye.